What's going on guys? In this video we are going to see an example of convolution integral. Particularly we are going to see an example of two polynomial functions convolved with each other. Okay. Now let's look at the functions. Let's say we have x of t that's equal to t cube g of t and uh, let's say y of t that is equal to t square g of t and here the question is asking us to compute z of t that is equal to x of t convolved with y of t so when we have this convolution we can express this one in terms of integral as z of t that's equal to integral going from negative infinity to infinity and then x of tau y of t minus tau d tau okay here the thing is we uh, like here mainly we have to find out the graph of this x of tau and also we have to find out the graph of y of t minus tau and based on that we are going to find our final answer now let's look at the x of tau so x of tau what we do instead of this t so here we have x of t that's equal to t cube u tau so when it's x of tau what we do is we just replace this t with tau so this is going to be what tau cube u of tau okay and you can see this is polynomial function like tau cube is a polynomial function and u of tau mean it's only turn on after zero so we are going to have a graph like this okay so it's going to be zero before like after zero it turns on and this is tau cube so the function is going to look like this so this is x of tau that is equal to tau cube u of tau okay and the next thing is we have to find out what is y of t minus tau so when y of t my when they say y of t minus tau what we do is instead of t we replace with t minus tau so we are going to have something like this let's use a different color so if y of t minus tau we are going to have y of t minus tau then instead of t we put t minus tau so this is going to be t minus tau square and u instead of t here we put t minus tau so u of t minus tau okay so in order to draw this one first we have to know what is minus tau going to look like because we are going to draw y of t minus tau let's uh, let's draw y of tau first y of tau is what y of tau is going to be tau square u of t tau square it's a polynomial multiplied by u of t it means it turns on at zero so you know that uh, it's a parabola and uh, turns on at zero mean we are going to have half of it so the graph is going to look like this it turns on right here okay this is y of tau because y of tau is tau square u of tau now the next thing is we have since we know we want to know y of t minus tau first we have to know what is y of negative tau that's going to be just reversal of this one let's draw that one next so this is going to be just the reversal of this one this is y of negative tau then y of t minus tau mean it's shifted to t units so we are going to have something like this let's draw this one so now we shouldn't put this one because we don't know where exactly t is so let's leave it blank and then we are going to continue like so before it's we know that it turns on at zero now this turns on at t right because this is y of t minus tau this minus tau shifted to t so this turns on at t okay so we found out what is y of t minus tau and here we have x of tau we want to know what is x of tau y of t minus tau so there are two cases we can have we can have where this uh, t is less than or equal to zero or we can have t is greater than zero 
these are the two graphs that's important for us we have to know what is x of tau look like and also we have to know what is y of t minus tau because we are only dealing with these two x of tau y of t minus tau now let's go uh, get rid of this shift because we need some space okay let's get rid of this one and let's look at the first case the first case is where t is okay, let's look at the situation where t is less than or equal to zero so is if t is less than or equal to zero it means it's going to turn on at negative axis right so if we combine these two together let's see the graph so if t is negative like less than or equal to zero it means it's going to turn on somewhere here so let's say this is t so it's going to turn on and go like this so this is t and this is y of t minus tau graph when t is less than zero and uh, if we multiply that one with x of tau x of tau graph is starting at zero right so this is x of tau graph and you can see there's no overlap in the non-zero axis so there's no overlap it means x of tau times y of t minus tau when t is less than or equal to zero is zero because there's no overlapping between them there's no non-zero overlap right so this is zero therefore if we integrate zero since we know that uh, integral negative infinity to infinity x of tau y of t minus tau that's zero we found out so negative infinity to infinity zero d tau that's going to give us zero right so the at region less than or equal to zero we are having zero okay now let's look at the condition where t is greater than zero let's get rid of this one or oh, just keep it as it is and let's do this again here so if it's um, if it's greater than zero if t is greater than zero what's going to happen this t is going to be here in the positive axis right so let's move this one to the positive axis so t is going to be somewhere here so this is going to be t right now because t is greater than zero and here you can see the expression is going to be let's uh, let's get rid of this expression this is for the old one okay so the expression for this one is what z of t that is equal to integral negative infinity to infinity x of tau that is what tau cube u of tau so this is going to be tau cube u of tau and then y of t minus tau before i wrote that one somewhere here what we do instead of this function given function we replace that all of this with t minus tau so t square is going to be t minus tau whole square and then u of t is going to be u of t minus tau so this is going to be the equation and d tau right now we can simplify this one by looking at this graph we can get rid of so all this u of tau stuff by just looking at this graph now here you can see there's before zero there's non-zero right so when we have one of them non-zero and the other one is like uh, one of them is non zero and the other one is zero because you can see this one is zero for this one zero so until zero we both of them have non zero exists but after zero one, only one of them has non zero so this is going to be the entire thing is going to be zero so the integral we can write starting at zero and for this one also same thing like after t if it extends one of them is zero and other one is non zero so we can also get rid of the part after this so it goes until zero to t so that's the first step and uh, when we do that we don't we, we don't have to write u of tau anymore so we can get rid of this u of tau and the only part that's left is tau cube t minus tau square t minus tau square d tau okay 
Now we can uh, go ahead and simplify this one furthermore. Now let's get rid of all these graphs. All these stuff. And this one, I found out this t is like, this one was zero when t is less than or equal to zero. So I should, I should re erase this one too. Let's note that one on top. When t is less than or equal to zero, this one was zero. When t is greater than zero, let's see what we have. So we had this one. Now we just have to expand this one and simplify and get the final answer. Now it's all math, okay. Now let's um, like uh, let's expand this one. So integral zero to t tau cube. If we expand t minus tau tau square, that's going to expand like t square minus two t tau plus tau square d tau, okay. Now we just have to multiply tau cube for everything. So this is gonna become zero to t tau cube t square and then two t tau power four plus tau power five all together d tau. And if you integrate this one, this is gonna become what? Tau power four divided by four t square and then minus 2 t tau power 5 divided by 5 plus tau power 6 divided by 6 going from 0 to t. Now we just, this is like, this is tau is equal to because we are integrating with respect to tau. So this is tau is equal to t, tau is equal to 0. So we just have to replace tau with t and 0. We know that if we replace with zero, that's going to be the whole thing is going to be zero. So we just have to replace this. The worry about the first term. First term, we we replace everything by t. If we do that, this is going to become what t power four divided by four times t square minus two t t power five divided by five plus t power six divided by six t power 4 t, t square that's going to be t, t power 6 let's continue here t power 6 divided by 4 minus 2 t power 6 divided by 5 plus t power 6 divided by 6 and uh, if we take a common denominator 5 times 6 is 30 30 times 4 120 we can take 120 as common denominator if we do that this is going to be what 30 t power 6 and this is going to become 5 times 5 times 24 so 25 times 2 that's going to be 48 so 48 t power 6 plus 20 t power 6 and if we simplify this one this is going to become 2 t power 6 because 30 plus 20 50 minus 48 2 divided by 120 so that's going to be t power 6 divided by 60 okay so this is what we have right now t power 6 divided by 60 and the final answer is going to be just we just have to multiply this one with unit step function z of t is equal to 1 over 60 t power 6 times u of t and that's going to be the solution for this one you can express this one in terms of piecewise function or unit step function like this I express this one like this so, so so that's it that's this is going to be our final answer I hope this helps thanks for watching